simplicity the way to live without ideals man continues to live with ideals he has to achieve this or that and thus human life goes on simplicity simply means to live without ideals ideals create complexity they create divisions in you and because these create divisions in you there is a complexity the moment you are interested in becoming somebody else you become complex to be contented with yourself as you are is the essence of simplicity the future brings complexity when you are utterly in the present now when here you are simple simply does not mean to live a life of poverty that is utterly stupid because the person who imposes a life of poverty on himself is not simple at all he is hypocrite he need to impose poverty means deep down he hankers for the diametrically opposite something which is diametrically opposite otherwise why should there be need to impose anything on him you impose a certain character upon yourself because you are just opposite of it the angry person wants to become compassionate the violent person wants to become non violent if you are non violent you will not try to become non violent and for what the person who imposes poverty upon himself is simply trying to live out a life according to others not according to his own innermost code simplicity means you are living life according to your innermost code not according to somebody else and to live according to others can never be simple the person who imposes something upon himself is simply trying to live a life according to others not according to his own innermost code not according to his own spontaneity and when you live life according to others how can it be simple to live according to others means to live a life of imitation it will be a plastic life you will be one thing on the surface and just the opposite of it in your inner depths and only the depth matters the surface never matters you will be a saint on the surface and a sinner deep down this creates a schizophrenia people have double standards and that is what is going to be decisive about you because god is only in contact with your inner depth not with your surface it does not matter what you are on the surface deep down what you are what is your understanding what is your awakening is all that matters the surface is in contact with the society the existence is in contact with your inner depth the existence only knows what you are it never knows what you are pretending to be the existence never knows about your actings that you are acting this role or that you may be pretending to be a great saint a master but existence will never know about it because it never knows anything that is false it knows only the real the real you simplicity means to be just yourself whatsoever you are in tremendous acceptance total agreement with no goal with no ideals with no where to go all ideals are crap scrap all of them
it needs guts to be simple it needs guts because you will be in constant rebellion with your inner and outer it needs tremendous courage because you will never be adjusted to the so called rotten society that exists around you you will be constantly an outsider but you will be simple and simplicity has its beauty and fragrance you will be utterly in harmony with yourself there will be no conflict within you there will be no split within you no symptoms of schizophrenia the ideals bring the split the bigger the ideal the bigger is going to be the split the ideal means somewhere in future one day maybe in this life or another you will be a great saint or something else meanwhile you are a sinner it helps you to go on hoping it helps you to go on believing in the surface that tomorrow everything will be okay that tomorrow you will be as you should be and today can be tolerated you can ignore it you need not take any notice of it either the real thing is going to happen tomorrow but tomorrow never comes it always comes as today it is always today and the person who lives in ideals goes on missing the reality because reality is now here to be now to be here is to be simple to be now to be here is to be simple and to be now and here is meditation to be like trees here now to be like clouds here now to be like birds here now to be like buddhas here now is the essence of simplicity the ideal needs the future simplicity is not an ideal people have make an ideal out of simplicity too such as human stupidity and nature simplicity can never be an ideal because no ideal can create simplicity it is the ideal which poisons you and makes you complex divides you makes two person out of you the one that you are and the one that you would like to be now there is going to be a constant war a civil war between what you are and what you want to be and when you are fighting with yourself the violent person is trying to be non violent the ugly person trying to be beautiful and so on and so forth when you are constantly trying endeavoring to be something else that you are not your energy is dissipated in that conflict your energy goes on leaking and energy is delight and to have energy overflowing is to be alive to be fresh and to be young look at people's face how dull they appear look at their eyes their eyes have lost all lusher and all depth feel their presence and you will not feel any radiance you will not feel any energy streaming from them on the contrary you will feel as if they are sucking your energy rather than overflowing with energy they have become black holes they suck you they exploit your energy being with them you will become poor that is why when you go into a crowd and you come back you feel tired weary you feel exhausted you need rest why why after being in a crowd do you feel as if you have lost something you certainly lose something because the crowd consists of black holes 
and the more unintelligent the crowd is, the more of a mob it is, the more you will feel exhausted. That is why when you are alone, sitting silently, not with anybody, in a tremendous celibate state, just alone, one becomes replenished, rejuvenated. Have you ever wondered that you are in the office you feel you return home exhausted, but at home you feel rejuvenated. That is why when you are alone, sitting silently, not with anybody, in a tremendous celibate state, just alone, one becomes replenished, rejuvenated. That is why meditation makes you younger, makes you livelier, you start sharing something with existence. Your energy is frozen no more, it is flowing. It starts flowing. You are in a kind of a dance, as stars are. A song arises in you. This is what happens when you are all alone in meditation. But in the crowd, you always lose. In meditation, you always gain. Why? What happens in meditation? In meditation you become simple. The future is your concern no more. That is what meditation is all about. Dropping all concerns with the past and future and being here now. Only this moment exists and whenever it happens, whenever only this moment exists, watching a sunrise, or looking at a white cloud floating in the sky or just being with a tree listening to the birds chirping silently communing or observing a bird on the wing whenever you forget all about the past and the future and the present moment takes possession of you when you are utterly possessed by this moment you are now and here you will feel rejuvenated. You will feel rejuvenated, refreshed. Why? The split disappears. The split created by the ideals are all disappears. You are one in that moment, integrated. You are all together and bliss happens. You begin to overflow with a new energy. Simplicity is not an ideal. You cannot impose simplicity on yourself. That is why I never say that people like Gandhi are simple. That is not. They cannot be. Simplicity is their ideal. He imposes simplicity. They are trying to attain it. Simplicity is a goal far away in the future distant and they are striving, they are straining, they are in great effort to achieve it. How can you create simplicity out of effort? Simplicity means that which is no more efforts. Out of efforts you are trying to improve upon existence. Existence is perfect as it is. It is total. It needs no improvement. The so-called saints go on constantly improving upon themselves. Drop this, drop that, repress this, impose that. This is not good, that is not good. Continuous efforts and in this way the life goes on. Continuous efforts and in this way, in this very effort they are lost. They are lost in the woods of efforts. Simplicity is a state of effortlessness. This is what happens. Just see the so-called humble people. They are constantly broadcasting their humbleness, that they are humble. And remember, simplicity is a state of effortlessness. It is humbleness, not the humbleness created against arrogance. Not humbleness created against ego. Not humbleness opposite to the 
proud mind. No humbleness is opposite to pride. Instead, it is simply absence of pride. Try to see the point. If you have strived to drop your pride, your ego, your arrogance, then what have you done is only repression. Now you will become proud about your humbleness. Now you will start bragging that you are humble. This is what happens. Just see the so-called humble people. They are constantly broadcasting that they are humble. The really humble people will not know that they are humble. How can they then brag about it? How can the humble person know that he is humble? The humble person is a person no more. The humble person is a state of fana, absorption. He has dissolved. Now he is only a presence. Indeed, humbleness is a presence, not a characteristic of personality, not a trait, but just a presence. Others will feel it, but you will not be able to feel it yourself. So is the case with simplicity. You are living your life naturally. The others who come in contact with you will feel that simplicity, that humbleness surrounding you. Simplicity simply means living moment to moment spontaneously, not according to some philosophy, not according to Jainism, Buddhism, Hinduism, Christianity, or Islam, not according to any philosophy. Whatever you live according to a philosophy, you have betrayed yourself. You are enemy to yourself. Simplicity means to be in a deep friendship with oneself, to live your life with no idea, no idea interfering with you. It needs tremendous courage. Certainly, because you will be living constantly in insecurity, the man who lives with ideas is secure. He is predictable. That is, and this predictableness is his security. He knows what he is going to do tomorrow. He knows. He knows if a certain situation arises, this is the way he will react to it. Is always certain. The man who is simple knows nothing about tomorrow, knows nothing about the next moment because he is not going to act out of his past. He will respond out of his present awareness. The simple person has no character. Only the complex person has character, good or bad. That is not the point. There are good characters and bad characters, and both of them are complex. The simple person is characterless, no character whatsoever. He is neither good nor bad, but he has a beauty which has no match. He has a beauty which no good people, no bad people can ever have. And good and bad are not very different from one another. They are aspects of the same coin. The good person is bad behind it and the bad person is good behind it. You will be surprised to know that saints always dream that they are committing sins. If you look into the dreams of your so-called saints, you will be very much surprised. What kind of dreams do they go on having? That is their suppressed mind that bubbles up, surfaces into their dreams. Sinners always dream that they have become saints. Sinners have the most beautiful dreams because they have been committing sins their whole life. They are tired of all those things. Now the denied part starts speaking to them in their dreams. In dreams, 
the denied part speaks to you your unconscious speaks to you the unconscious is the denied part remember if you are good in your conscience in your conscious state if you have cultivated good characteristics in your conscious state you will be bad all that you have denied will become your unconscious and vice versa and you will dream that the simple person has nothing to hide no unconscious no conscious there is no division he is simply aware his whole house his whole innerness is full of light his whole being knows only one thing and that is awareness he has not denied anything hence he has not created any split and there is nothing unconscious in him this is something to be understood sigmund freud and carl gustav jung and alfred elder and others think that the conscious and unconscious are something natural they are not the unconscious is a by product of civilization the more a person is civilized the bigger an unconscious he has because civilization means you repress you repress many things repression means you are denying a few parts of your being from coming into the light you are pushing them into darkness you are throwing them into your basement so that you never come across them again people have thrown their sex their anger their violence in the basement and they have locked the doors look at the people that you see around all these things are lurking from the basement but violence sex and anger and things like these cannot be locked up they are like ghosts they can pass through the walls there is no way to prevent them if you succeed in preventing them in your daytime they will come in the night they will haunt you in your dreams now analyze the situation when you repress violence sex and anger and things like these they become ghost now you can express these unconsciously as normally happens many times i have triggered off the violence the anger the frustration in you a simple situation comes a simple word is spoken and these things surface you have to go into these consciously act out your anger act out your violence act out your sex all that is suppressed in you this is why we have the active meditations where all that is repressed comes to the surface through catharsis through chaotic breathing and you live those moments of unconsciousness consciously meditatively knowingly full of awareness it is because of the unconscious that people dream the more civilized the person the more he dreams go to the aboriginals the natural people a few are still in existence and you will be again surprised to know that they do not dream they do not dream much very rarely once in a while years pass and they never report any dreaming they simply sleep without dreams because they have not repressed anything they have been living naturally the simple person will not have any unconscious the simple person will not have any dreams but the complex person will have dreams mahatma gandhi said that although he had succeeded in attaining celibacy as far as waking consciousness is concerned but in dreams sexual imagery is still floated into his being to the very end he was having sexual dreams and he was very much puzzled he was puzzled because he was absolutely miseducated about the whole phenomena
He was thinking that he had done whatsoever one can do to be celibate, and he had done it. There is no question about his sincerity as far as his efforts are concerned. He was very sincere. He had done all that is said by the tradition, and he had failed. In Mahatma Gandhi's failure, the whole tradition has failed. The tradition of repression, tradition of denying, tradition of life negation, tradition of imposing ideals, all has failed in his experiment. Because in the night, whenever he would sleep, the unconscious would start speaking and the denied part would start playing in his mind. And that he had denied, all that he had denied, would surface. That is what happens to you. If you have a fast one day, in the night you will have a feast in your dreams. In the dreams you are bound to be invited to a special feast. The fast creates feast in the dream and the people who are fasting during the days may start thinking of fasting they always think about it. And the people who are feasting in the day may start thinking of fasting. They always think about it. It is only in rich countries became interested in fasting. Now only America is interested in fasting, dieting and all things like that. A poor country cannot think of fasting. A poor country is always fasting always dieting, always undernourished, and rich people think of fasting. When a rich man celebrates his religious day, he fasts. When a poor man celebrates a religious day, he gives a feast. You can see the logic in it. We go on compensating. The dream is always compensatory. It compensates your waking life. The simple man will not dream and he will not have unconscious. The simple man will be simple. He will live moment to moment with no idea how to live or any philosophy of life. He must trust in his intelligence. He will trust in his intelligence. What is the need of having a philosophy? Why should one have a philosophy? If you are intelligent, you don't need any philosophy of life. Intelligence is enough unto itself. Indeed, intelligence is light unto itself. A blind man asks for guidance to know the door or in what direction he should move. Only the blind man prepares himself before he takes any move. The man who has eyes simply moves because he can see. When the door comes, he will know and when the turn comes he will know he can trust his eyes and that is the case with the inner world too. trust your intelligence your intelligence is the eyes as far as inner life is concerned instead of philosophies of life you will be trust your intelligence instead of philosophies of life Otherwise, you will remain stupid. Remember, intelligence is the eyes as far as the inner life is concerned. Trust your intelligence instead philosophies of life. Otherwise, you will remain stupid. The major part of humanity has remained unintelligent because it has trusted in the philosophies of life. Christians, Hindus and Muslims. Remember, each child is born intelligent. Intelligence is not something that a few people have and a few don't. Intelligence is the fragrance of life itself. Life has it. If you are alive, you are intelligent. And then, if you never trust it, slowly and slowly it starts disappearing from your life. If you do not use your legs, you will lose the capacity to run. If you do not use your eyes for three years and remain with a blindfold, you will become blind. 
you can keep your senses alive only if you go on continuously using them. Intelligence is a natural phenomenon. Every child is born intelligent. Very few people live intelligently and very few people die intelligently. 99.9% .9 of people remain stupid their whole life. However, they, are, they were not unintelligent in the beginning. They never use their intelligence. When they are small children, they trust their parents for guidance. If the parents really love their children, they will teach them how to trust their own intelligence. Later they have to trust the teachers in the school, then the professors in the college and in the university. By the time one third of their life is gone, they come out of the university utterly stupid without any answer for the simple questions that life asks. One third of their life they have been taught to trust somebody else. That is how their intelligence has been prevented from functioning. Look at the small children how intelligent they are. Indeed they are alive, fresh and tremendously ready to learn. And look at the older people. They are dull, insipid, unable to learn anything. Instead they go on clinging to all that they know, but never ready to go into any adventure. The whole effort of the parents should be to make the child use his intelligence and whole effort of the education will be to throw the child again and again to his own intelligence so that he can function and use his intelligence. He may not be so efficient in the beginning, that is true. The teacher may have the right answer. But if the student has to work out his own answer, the answer may not be so right. But that is not the point at all. The answer may not be so right. It may not correspond to the answer given in the books, but it will be intelligent. And that is the real crux of the matter as far as education is concerned. What children? You will be constantly surprised. I was watching the show called India's Best Drama Bars. It involves children from between the age of 5 and 12. In one of the act, one little boy comes to a vet doctor. For him the doctor is doctor and he must have treatment for everything. He says, five years ago I was hit by an auto wheeler and I lost my memory. Since then I had been looking for that truck. The doctor said, you were hit by an auto, auto wheeler. How come you are looking for a truck? Child innocently answers, can't you see in five years I have grown up? So why would that auto wheeler will not grow up into a truck? This is the kind of intelligence of the children. One of my cousin who was about five or six years of age, when I was growing, one day I asked, I said, why do you do mischief that everybody has to complain? He said, my dear brother, if the children do not do mischief, who else do you think will do the mischief? It is a reply of an intelligence. What children you will be constantly surprised. But we start destroying their intelligence because we are too concerned about the right answer. Not the intelligent answer. Let the answer be intelligent. Let the answer be somewhat original. Now this answer is not the right answer, but it is an intelligent answer. And when you hear answers like this, you will simply laugh. But we do not encourage such intelligent answers in life. Let the answer be intelligent and let the answer be somewhat original and the child's own. Never be bothered about the right. There is no need to be in such a hurry. The right will come on its own. Let this child search for it. Let him stumble upon it on his own. And then one day he will discover. 
We simply cripple the child's growth of intelligence by supplying him with the right answer. The child is never allowed to find the answers himself. We give him the ready-made answers. When the answer is given from outside, intelligence need not grow. Because intelligence only grows when it has to find the answer itself. But we are so obsessed with the idea of right that no wrong should ever be committed. And the person who never commits anything wrong can never grow. Growth needs that you should go astray sometimes, that you should start playing around in search of the original thing. One should come to the right by his own effort and own growth. This is intelligence. To be simple means to be intelligent. Simplicity is intelligence. Living without ideals, without guides, without maps, just living moment to moment without any curiosity. Our concern with the right and our fear of the wrong is nothing but the fear of the insecurity. The right makes us secure, the wrong makes us insecure and life is insecurity. There is no security anywhere. You may have a bank balance, but the bank balance can go bankrupt one day. You may have the security of having a husband or a wife, but the wife can leave you any moment. She can fall in love or the husband may die. Life is insecure. The security is only an illusion that we create around ourselves like a cozy illusion. And because of this cozy illusion, we destroy our intelligence. The man who wants to live simple will have to live in insecurity. He will have to accept the fact that nothing is secure and certain. We are on an unknown journey and nobody can be certain where we are going and nobody can be certain from where we are coming. In fact, except for these stupid people, no one has illusion of certainty. The more intelligent you are, the more uncertain you are. The more intelligent you are, the more hesitant, because life is vast. Life is immense, immeasurable and mysterious. How can you be certain? Living in uncertainty, living in insecurity is simplicity. This is living here now.